Dr. Abraham, welcome back. Let's uh, start off straight with a telephone call. We have a viewer calling us from uh, Colorado, Mia in Colorado. Go ahead with your question. Uh, thank you for uh, taking my call. Um, uh, Dr. Abraham, uh, you said they used the court system to ban you from running. Um, I want to know if you have an appeal process going on. Are you hoping for a pardon from the court, or are you going to defy the court's order that uh, you're going to end up back in jail? Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you for your question, Mayor. We have exhausted the process, and everybody knows the International Legal Fraternity, the International Bar, the International Commission of Juries have already concluded that the, the entire process is flawed. But, uh, but I did observe the entire due process. So right now, uh, it, it's only up to the uh, king to uh, give the pardon. It is, to my mind, it's a non-issue for now, and we have to proceed. Uh, there's no question of going back to jail under the present law, but uh, unless the, uh, other, other, other considerations, other factors come in. Is it likely that the king will grant uh, a pardon? I don't know, because um, from the great vine, the message is something positive, mm -hmm. but I have not submitted any appeal. Okay. Let's get in an email question here. This one is from Fahash Wafa Salvador in the United Kingdom. And uh, the question is, what can Malaysians living outside of the country do to most effectively support the reform agenda? Well, uh, first exercise your right as a citizen. And you are outside, you are free. Uh, you are not being uh, under the surveillance of the intelligence uh, apparatus. Uh, yes, the Malaysian Embassy or High Commission sometimes uh, overstretch their power, but have the courage. You are talking about your role to ensure that the country uh, move uh, forward you are, um, uh, according to the Constitution. Uh, and constitutional guarantees uh, basic right of freedom, of expression, of conscience, and etc. Uh, you want uh, the country to succeed, so make sure that your voice is heard emails, uh, blogs, um, uh, campaign, uh, talk to people, uh, distribute pamphlets. Well, I want to read to you what a think tank analyst uh, based in London said recently about you. Uh, she said, his supporters saw him as a Nelson Mandela of Malaysia who would come to power and change everything. But now, not much needs to be changed. How do you respond to statements like that? Well, that is on the presumption that um, the initial pronouncements of uh, Prime Minister Abdullah Badawi to respect the rule of law, um, uh, separation of powers, combat corruption, propel economy works. In fact, as a matter of policy, I did endorse, I did uh, take a very positive view of the pronouncements of Prime Minister Badawi. But then uh, three years have passed, nothing has happened. In fact, uh, you look at the indexes, uh, both the corruption index has plunged. And the competitive index, we have lost out. Uh, foreign direct investments, we have lost out to many of our neighboring countries. So a lot of things need to be done. Uh, and and uh, the, if it's really worthy think tank, he has to really evaluate the entire process because the facts uh, does not uh, uh, defend the position he's taking. Right. The country is in dire need of change. You know, the Malaysian government, or at least the information minister in the Malaysian government, doesn't consider you much of a political force. He said recently, he's nothing in Malaysia's politics right now. There is no issue. If he was still in prison, he might have a stronger presence. <laughs> well, uh, this is his personal view. But if it is true what the information minister is saying or suggesting, why is it that I'm banned from entering any campus? Why am I not allowed, uh, no news uh, is allowed to be printed about me in the media? That means I'm seen to be a threat. Otherwise, I should be given uh, basic right and freedom as any other citizen. I'm not able to do that. I'm not able to function, I'm not to, about, uh, to teach, lecture in the university, enter any business premises. Nothing is allowed. Uh, no way the Malaysian television under that Minister of Information would allow me even half a minute except if they attempt to demonize me. You know, at the time uh, of your conviction, you accused your government colleagues of corruption. Do you believe that graft is still endemic in Malaysia today? It is uh, unfortunately worse off. It's not just my personal view. You look at Transparency International, you look at the Corruption Index, uh, you look at the series of allegations, the allegations against um, the uh, 
Director General of Anti-Corruption Agency. They are complicity over huge uh, and massive commissions uh, accrued by the government, by the Defense Ministry, involving the Defense Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister Najib Tun Razak. And these are not mere allegations. People have adduced evidence, $120 million commission for two submarine deals from France, a $100 million commission for, for Sukhoi jets from Russia. And what is done? Nothing is done. If there are any investigations, no investigations. Mm -hmm. So uh, these problems affecting the morale, uh, even the principle of uh, the institutions of governance, enforcement authorities, and uh, judiciary. Okay, let's get another question in from a viewer. This is Mungafar from Kuala Lumpur is calling us. Mungafar, go ahead. Hello. Yes, go ahead with your question, please. My question is, uh, the Indians in this country, we are here for almost uh, 100 over years. Hello? Yes, go yeah. ahead, we can hear you. And, and uh, in the last 40 years under the new economic policy, the Indians have been marginalized to below 1% of the economic share. So what does Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim intends to do for this? Uh, well, that comes back to the new economic policy yeah. that you were talking about earlier on. Uh, thanks, Mugapa. You know, uh, our policy to dismantle the new economic policy, you are right. They are poor, downtrodden, marginalized Indians, uh, particularly in the estate sector and the squatters in this country. But uh, you have to appreciate the fact that the poor and the marginalized are in the rural sector, in the urban sector, in the estate sector. That is why I believe that the new economic policy should be dismantled and we come together as Malaysians, Malays, Chinese, Indians, Kadazans, Ibans, work together under Kandilan and come out with this program, have the courage, the strong conviction that this country has enough resources to benefit all who are industrious, who work hard. And I, and I believe this is a program not only good for the Indians, but it is a major help to the marginalized Malays too.